Hey guys, so taking a page out of Chris Edwards' amazing page of uh, how to make uh, videos simple and easy, I'm not going to do these on YouTube yet. I'll still just keep posting them here. But uh, he mentioned that maybe I should, uh, for those of you that are getting into the uh, whole nostalgia Amiga thing, or maybe even those of you that have had Amigas, way back when, uh, you don't know how to use uh, the 3D software, Lightwave. I, I always, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're in this Facebook group, you've probably seen me post videos and talk about Lightwave, Lightwave. What the heck is this guy talking about Lightwave? Well, it's this 3D software. Um, you know, it's the it's animation software. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna assume most of you guys know what the software is. It's animation software. And this is, uh, it's cool. It's really easy to use. I, I wanted to just do a, uh, a really quick brief video. When I say brief, that does not mean short. That just means I'm going to briefly cover, cover, I'm briefly going to cover a topic or two on this program. Uh, but this video is not going to be short. So if you're not in for the long haul, go ahead and, uh, you know, maybe go watch videos of people's cats doing cute things. Anyway, so Lightwave, you, you get this, you got your Amiga set up, you download an image, you get your Amiga installed, or you get your Pi or your Vampire, whatever it is, and you're like, what's this Lightwave program? People are always talking about Lightwave. I think this is, uh, they're always the Babylon 5 that people say, or uh, maybe some of you know, like, I don't know, like the, the Firefly show, or the Battlestar Galactica, or... You know, which, which 3D program is best 3D program? I don't know. I hear about the Lightwave program. Lightwave was huge in the late 90s and early to mid 2000s. It was the de facto visual effects tool for many studios in uh, television and even film, but mostly television. And then it, it uh, unfortunately kind of trailed off because the people that were making the program didn't really keep up with uh, the evolution that visual effects and television uh, had. So, uh, but who cares about all that? That's, that's the present. We're talking about the past because we're using Amigas and we all live in the past because we love living in the past. You know why? Because we were younger, sexier, and stronger. Anyway, Lightwave, File, you know what this is. Load scene, save scene. So load scene, what is load scene? Well, when you go to load scene, you're gonna see load scene file. And there's a folder called scenes, or there won't be, because you don't have any. But the point is, a scene is, and I'm gonna really try and use um, words or phrases to people that are not familiar with 3D at all, which will maybe annoy those of you that are familiar with 3D. Like, why is he talking like this? I'm making this video not for you. If you're watching this, you already know how to use the software. So an LWS file is an assembly file. It's a data file that contains all of the items that this program will load for you to interact with. On the Amiga, we didn't really use extensions like we do in the Windows world. But even in the Amiga, fairly early on, the extensions were adopted just to distinguish uh, the difference between what a file was. So you will see these LWS sometimes on really old Lightwave files that you load up. You might see a .scn file. That's a scene file. See, load scene. See here? Yeah, load scene. So that's why you'll see that. So if you see .scn, that's a scene file. On the flip side, ew, load object. So we'll go load object. Eh, let's pick something randomly here. So there's object, see down here, objects, B5. So here, here's a good example. Here we go to gate. You're gonna see jumpgate.lwo. Well, that's light wave object. Now, again, because, you know, back in the Amiga days before, uh, people are using extensions, you might find files that don't have .lwo. Or you might find files that use something different, like 
I, you know, earlier with scene file, I said .scn. Um, earlier, you might find a file that just says um, ob or um, something else that's oh, actually .object. Yeah, you know, it's, but generally, lwo will be uh, the file that you come across the most. So that's what that is. And then when you load that scene file, this, this descriptor that, that uh, you know, that loads all the items in for you to play with, uh, you, can, you can click on the scene button here. This tells you, you know, this is the first frame, this is the last frame, here's the frames per second. All this, all this does here, this shows, this gives you an overview of what's in the file. So you can go through, this is like a database. Think of it, this is like a Excel in a way. You can scroll through here and you can see everything that's in here. Okay, all the items that are in here. And it's telling you that this is 120 frames long. It's 120 frames long at 30 frames a second. So you can do some quick math on that and that will tell you how long this animation will actually play when it's done. So there you go, 120 frames, 30 frames a second. Um, Normally, we would do 24 frames a second, but this is an old file, and it's at 30, because back in the old days, we, we did that a lot. We did lots of weird things back in the old days. So as you can see, this is the Solar Sailor animation that I posted earlier. You can see you're getting a preview of the item. We are currently uh, looking through the camera. That's why the camera here is highlighted in yellow. And we are currently editing the view, not the camera, not the object, not the lights, not the bones. So if I was to click over here and left click and move my mouse around, nothing happens. Like what's going on? Well, that's because we're not currently editing anything except the view. So what we need to do is click on camera and look, see how it says move here. We're gonna click this to rotate. And when we come over here, we're gonna left click again and watch what happens we can move the camera around. And what I'm doing right now by left clicking the mouse and moving it left and right and up and down like I'm doing right now, this is why this program, Lightwave, is still used to this day. I'm gonna right click now. Look, it banks. Look at that, isn't that great? Whoa. I'm gonna click move. Left click again, and when I when I say left click, by the way, left click hold. I'm gonna move in and out, move the camera around. Ooh, look at this, I'm moving things. Kind of like if I was holding the camera on my shoulder, right? Like you would hold a real camera, see that? Left click, move around, move around. Hey, I wanna look at this now, this looks cool. Now I wanna rotate, let's click on rotate. Click, look up here. I don't know, that looks a little weird. It looks like it's going down. Well, let's right click and make it look like it's going up. Hey, that's cool. Let's let's rotate over here now. This is why this program, by the way, is still used today for previs artists, people that do um, animation sequences that others will take to final and make look awesome because this, this Lightwave program is still, even to this day, really, really intuitive and quick to use to set up shots. And that's why everyone loves using this program. And why I still use it, by the way. But I'm just giving you a really quick you know, overview of how this works. So in the, in the camera view, you gotta make sure you're editing the camera. You're clicking on rotate or move. That's how you do that. Now you might ask yourself, well, that's cool, but I wanna edit an object. Well, duh, click on object. And look, see this yellow here, just like the buttons over here? This lets you know this is the object that's gonna be edited. If you look down here, you can see Rider Beam 2, because I have two of these objects in the scene. Here's Rider Beam 1, it's over here. So if I click Move, and let me turn on everything, This, these little yellow things, just like the yellow over here, lets you know that it's active. Now, if I move, look, it's moving. Oh my goodness, it's moving crazy. It's like right in front of the camera now. Look at that. So that's how you move things. And it's, it's, it's really, really, really simple. So you can go on this big list here and you can pick things like, I don't know, let's, let's pick something cool like, um, hmm, sailor null. 
Oh, big yellow plus looking thing. Okay, so let's move that. Well, that moves the whole dang thing. That's because all of these items are attached to this big yellow plus. And as I move this big yellow plus, I can move it around the scene. So again, really simple to do, very intuitive. And if you smash the enter key, you will lock this movement in time on this particular frame, which is 41. And then using the slider, you can go through and say, now I want this to be, you know, down here. And you can uh, hit enter like this. See, selected, this is what's selected. Or you can say everything right here, all. Or you can get even fancier, the selected thing and anything that's connected to it, you can lock it at that frame using this. And that's how you have animation yay so that's a real simple version of how you use this little weird interface over here surfaces i'm not going to get into this right now but yes all of those objects those items i was selecting here in the viewport those have their own items attached to them called surfaces or materials these are the things that make them show up when you uh, press the render button so, you know, this is what makes, uh, like, the, the Tron wall, the Sailor, you know, this is what makes them show up when you render. And, you know, the names of these things are pretty straightforward. Again, this program is really intuitive. It's not that hard to figure out. But that's the surface editor. Image editor is obviously images that you load to use in the shot. Um, lights. This is where you adjust your lighting and all your various light types. Camera is the resolution that you're going to render at. Um... This is the adaptive sampling on the uh, lightweight version of um, light with the lightweight version. The, the adaptive sampling on the Amiga version of Lightwave is inverse of what it is today in the PC world. So my brain isn't too up on this, but yeah, this 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 sixteen number is, is a decent number to okay. use. You don't have to use it, but using adaptive will get you faster renders, no matter what anti-aliasing mode you use here. And yes, the enhanced modes are slower, but they look better. Of course, over in record, you know, this is gonna, what you're gonna see when you render uh, 8-bit, if you're on an AG Amiga, if you're uh, on an Amiga that has an actual Picasso card, you can do this, Picasso mode, and you'll get a nice 24-bit clean image. Or if you have a CyberVision 64 card and you have the appropriate uh, software installed, you can select it as well. And of course, if you actually have a, like an Amiga 2000 with a video toaster or an Amiga 4000 with a toaster 4000 in it, you can render your images to it and you'll see them in beautiful 24-bit color. Uh, that's what that's for. So this, again, just a really simple overview. The record button is where you would save out like your animation. So again, this, this, this thing flying through here is an animation. We want to save it and save animation. 8-bit ham anim is what I chose, and you pick a path for it, and you can save it. Or you can save individual frames, like a flipbook, like, you know, individual slices of time saved to a disk animation. And then you can pick a format. I use 24-bit Targa because it's just a very classic old format that's compatible with literally everything on the planet. So that's why I use it. Um, there's lots of other formats here you can pick. But this one will work on every single platform that's available. So that's why I use Targus. Not the most efficient, but the most compatible. And that's the uh, super brief overview of Lightwave and how to uh, get into some very simple basics. I know a lot of you just load this program and... You know, maybe you you know to because we're not we're not stupid. We know to load something and load it, and then we then we eventually figure out. Oh, I can hit the button down here. It says render. Oh, look, I rendered something. Oh, cool. No, so I mean, I'm just trying to give you a little more detail on this program than that. Obviously, you can Google and find out everything you need to know about this program. There's tons of videos on YouTube about this program. Ironically, is that the right word? Ironically. Fun, funnily is funnily a word there's probably more videos about this program on the during its amiga era and early windows era 
than its current era. So, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure about that, but yeah. So you'll, you'll have no problem finding videos how to use this software. But that's my quick overview of this. Uh, the effects tab, yeah, this is where you can have the background show pretty colors and you can have fog. So items in your scene like this little guy here will fade away into the distance using uh, the fog setting and stuff. But that's getting into other stuff. So, okay, so there it is. There's my little horrible video that wasn't scripted. And uh, this is why I don't have a YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.